Happy to welcome on a guy who, when I was on campus at the University of Illinois, was was tearing it up on the football field and, and brought a lot of life to the Illinois football program. It's really has been Regis. Thanks for joining us, man. How you been? I've been pretty good, man. Thanks for having me here. Um, you know, just uh, it's great to be back in Champaign. You know, we got a uh, primetime game tomorrow against uh, Merlin against uh, Zook and Lockster, and uh, we're looking to come away with that win, man. Yeah. So first time back on campus, right? Uh, Regis for the first time in a long time. Like, wh why now? And and uh, you know, I, I guess the last thirteen years it just didn't didn't yeah. happen to where you could get back. Like, why did you want to come back now? Uh, you know, dealing with the hectic life of being a professional athlete. You know, uh, having a family, uh, getting married with kids and stuff. You know, those type of things pull you away from some of the familiar things that you were that I was doing when I was a, a single man out here just playing professional football. A lot of different things has accumulated in my life outside of football. But, you know, honestly, it I, I've always wanted to get it back up here, but I never really felt like I had the connection to really get back up here. There were so many coaching changes. We never had any, like, stability where I could build a rapport with anybody. But for some reason, uh, uh, what's going on now, it seems like it's some familiar things. You know, dealing with the jersey changes, a lot of that stuff looks back – you know older and back retro back to when I was playing and some of the things that I remember so it's exciting to see what they're doing up here coach Bielum you know playing against him uh, at Wisconsin and uh you know running into him at with the Patriots uh, having joint practices and um you know just uh, it's good to see what's going on here and uh, the elevation of the facilities and just everything overall I was going to ask you, I don't know if uh, Brett Bielema has fond memories of you, Regis, uh, with the upset yeah. in 2007, but what did you think of that hire? And I know uh, the last two weeks have been rough for yeah. Illinois, but uh, what do you think about what he can do here? Um, I'm, 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 I'm anxious to see, you know, what, what he's able to do. I know, I do know he's a, a really good coach and I definitely stand behind him and support him. You know, he's always been a great competitor even when he was at Wisconsin, when we were playing against those guys, they always, you know, brought it to the table, you know, whenever they came to play us. So, you know, he seems like he has everything under control here and he's going to, you know, build his program back up. And I think he's a guy for, you know, the situation right now and, you know, to, to, to elevate us and, you know, keep, keep growing our program back. Um, yeah, so I, you're coming back here this week with Mike Loxley, who I know had a big part in, in you uh, becoming such a great player. I mean, obviously you're very talented, but coming here to Illinois and Coach Zook, um, yeah. I'm sure you keep in touch with them, but what's it going to be like to see them on the other sideline on Friday night? Um, it's going to be funny. It's going to be fun as well, too. You know what I mean? Um, you know, just to, to, to be around those guys and seeing them on the opposite sideline and, you know, knowing what they did here and, you know, what, what they're trying to do in another uh, program. But, you know, those guys were, were one of the big reasons that I did come here and was able to, you know, you know bleed orange and blue. So, you know, those guys are always, you know, special and dear in my heart. And, you know, I look forward to them putting forth a good game. But, you know, it's just not against us, not on our day. Well, really, you did have so many great options, right, to, to go anywhere you wanted to. What, uh, how, did, how did Coach Locks and, and Coach Zook – convince you to, to come here? Because I'm sure Coach Beal must yeah. do the same thing. Yeah, you know, all of them did, man. But for some reason, I tell people the story all the time. I've always had, like, Illinois in my top three. And every visit that I would go on, people would talk bad about Illinois. Like, why do you have them on your list? Like, why are you even looking at them? You know, I had a lot of people, you know, tell me not to go here, this, that, and the other. So I was like, you know, I want to go there. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to go somewhere and turn the program around. I want to be a, a, a guy that can, you know, be a difference maker. You know what I mean? I couldn't, like you said, went anywhere, but it was just something about Illinois and the people up here that, you know, drove me here and made it comfortable for me to come here. And, and as you look back, what, how did that impact you? Uh, you know, blazing your own trail. Like, how do you think that was different than going to say Notre Dame or yeah. Miami at the time, something like that? Um, it was definitely different, and I think it has prepared me for, you know, life just in general for, for me to, you know, rely on myself, you know, to take things into my own accountability and, and, and see what I could fester up and just falling in line to something that has already been set for years and years to come. So I just wanted to build some rich history here, uh, just do something different. I want to go against the grain, and um, it has definitely, you know, helped, you know, and it's a decision that I make again over and over. Obviously, you go to a program like Illinois, a five-star recruit. You expect to play right away. Um, yeah. That first year, 
uh, I remember, you know, I was a student, I was a junior at that time and uh-huh. you're excited for that year, but we didn't know it would be quite like that. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. When did you know that that season was special? Um, man, I just knew it was special. We had a lot of seniors on that team as well. You know, my, 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 my freshman year. And, you know, I think they, those guys were great leaders at the same time as well. You know, having playing with Jay Layman and, you know, some of those type of guys, um, Juice and they, they, they wanted to win, man. And, you know, I, I wanted to win. There was a lot of guys, y'all, the young guys that were coming in that wanted to win and wanted to do something, you know, and wanted to just stick out. But, you know, overall, I just believe that, uh, you know, for, for, for me to come here and just, just be acclimated with some of the guys and just winning some of the games, you know, nobody thought that we would win anything. Nobody thought we would be, you know, playing against uh, USC in the Rose Bowl, you know? So that's what it's all about, man. You know, just going against the odds. I love it. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, a, I'm a big, I'm a big um, rooter for the underdogs. And I think that's what we were. And people looked at us like that. And we just went out and played football. Uh, freshman year, for people who don't remember, um, Regis was freshman of the year, 54 receptions, 767 yards. He had a touchdown uh, in the Rose Bowl. You and Richard uh, got yeah. there. Is there, is there the, a fond memory you look back at, whether it was in the game, whether it was training camp, really? Like, is there anything from that team that you still look on most fondly? Man, not a day goes by where I don't think about the team and, you know, what we went through and, you know, where we started from and where we uh, finished off at. You know, I think about it all, all the time. You know, what I mean, there's not like just one specific memory. I relish the moments, and I remember everything because it was, it was pretty big. You know, it was a culture shock at first when I even got up here from Washington D.C. and just to get acclimated and meeting different people, different type of things. So, you know, everything, man. The Rose Bowl. You know, all all the things, all the moments that I spent with my teammates in the locker room, training camp, six a.m. drills. Just everything, you know what I mean? So, you know, just the brotherhood of it and um, just a collective group of people trying to accomplish a goal. It was just awesome. Juice Williams uh, is one of the all-time greats of the program. Obviously, some big moments that year. Um, Ohio State, of course, comes to mind. But he had an elite fastball. It's, it seemed like he threw that all the time. What was it like to catch a Juice Williams fastball? <laughs> Juice, Juice would throw a fastball as soon as you're coming out to the break. You got to get your head around, man. That's, that's one thing. Juice, Juice was always going to put it on you. And uh, but that was good. Ben is on the Big Ten, man. You know, I know the as the years go on, the style of football always changes in, in, in a way. And, you know, we was playing big boy football, you know, so, uh, you know, Juice, Juice, Minnesota Juice was like a running back playing quarterback. And, you know, the type of things that he was able to do and Rashad and so many guys that was in the offense. And, you know, it was it was it was a sight to see, man. I wish we could have had more time together. Yeah. 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 Uh, how how were uh, practice battles with with Vontae Davis at, at corner? Yeah. Oh man, that that that's something that evolved from high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you know, iron sharpening an iron. You know, him making me better, and I'm making him better. You know, it was a it was a dog fight. It was something that wasn't talked about, but we just knew we competed against each other. We never talked about it, but it was always a dog fight in practice. I don't think people remember too much about that next year. Cause I know it was disappointing going five and seven, but yeah. you and juice put up uh, such big numbers. I mean, the last two years, I know you guys didn't do what you wanted to uh, yeah. you just, and you had some injury issues your uh, junior year, but um, what, what are your big takeaways from those final two years here? You yes. had where you entered the NFL. Um, those, it was kind of tough because, you know, we, I had lost Mike Loxley. He had went on to uh, New Mexico. And, you know, we uh, brought a a different style of offense. And it was kind of hard because I wasn't being used the same way that I was before. And I wasn't used to kind of like being a decoy. You know what I mean? So my last year, I was kind of like a decoy in a way in our our offense. I wasn't like, you know, getting the ball. So, and I was fixated on staying my next year, but I just couldn't, you know, and then Zook wasn't, I didn't know if he was going to be there. It was just so many pieces moving around and stuff. So, um we didn't get a chance to do some of the things that we you know had planned out to do and I thought that we could have accomplished but you know so many guys wanted to disperse different ways man but if we could have kept that team together coaching staff everything for the at least another three more seasons it would have I think it would have definitely elevated the program 
So, so if that offense would have been better, you would have been back. You think for a senior year, like even though Absolutely. you were you were a second round pick, man. Like you Absolutely. Been I would I would have been back because I had an opportunity to play with my brother. Yeah. But also, you know, have an opportunity to get closer to finishing my degree, and just like I wasn't in a rush, man. I was enjoying this, uh, you know. But you know, some things lead to others, and you know, that year I was coming out was the last year of the CBA, the old CBA. So it was a lot of factors that played involved for me to just leave my junior year. What is a jump like to the NFL for for a junior in college? I mean, probably just yeah. twenty one, right? Like, yeah. How big of a I mean, we, we always think about, oh, this is great. They're, they're a second-round pick, but you're, you're just 21 entering that world. What's that like? Um, it's, a, it's another, it's another uh, culture shock. And when I say culture shock, just being the life of an athlete and knowing, you know, that it's just a business. It's a business outside of just the game, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's a lot of moving pieces as far as, you know, everybody is trying to get somewhere. Everybody is trying to – you know, had their own, you know, accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's a collective accomplishment within, you know, own guys' accomplishment, but it was pretty tough, you know, as far as the style of offense. That's one thing that I probably struggled with my rookie season coming from a spread of offense, not huddling up. So when I started to hit a verbiage my rookie year, it was kind of tough because some plays would be like a paragraph almost. Mm. And I had to, you know, always remember that. And, you know, I was a Z receiver. So, you know, I had not really know what was going on within the whole play because I was specific. I was a specific blocker. I wasn't a tag receiver, but um, it, it 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 was a lot, you know what I mean. And it's always a is a big jump from you know college to the NFL for a receiver based off the the terminology, the verbiage, the speed of the game. You know, getting in and out of your breaks, how the quarterback throwing the ball, you know, timing. So. You know, those were some things that probably took me two, two, two to three seasons to really, like, get acclimated with and feel comfortable to play full speed. I mean, obviously, you, you had some success in the NFL, Regis. Um, you know, a couple of good years with Tampa. And I know Josh Freeman was there, and that was kind of an up-and-down yeah. experience. But um, and, then, and then you get traded. And I, what, what is – to go through stuff like that, um, yeah. you know, just even mentally, what was your experience like? Um, it, it was a lot. You know what I mean? Um, it was a lot because I got hurt. I told my ACL one year, then I come back the next season to my ACL again. And then I, the next following season after that, I shattered my collarbone. You know what I mean? So it was a lot of back to back to back. And I tell guys all the time who do ask me this question, you know, uh, one of the things that I wish I probably would have focused on more was probably my mental health yeah. throughout the whole situation, because I put 110% into my body to hurry up and get back on the field. You know what I mean? That's what you're taught. And that's the nature of the business. But I wish I would have focused more so on like, all right, this is what it is. And I need to take these steps and it's a process to get it back. But I kept fighting the injury bug, injury bug over and over and over. And I think I, at some point my body got tired yeah. and mentally and physically that I just was like, you know, all right, this is, this is it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I did as much as I can. And, you know, having two ACLs and an LCL fracture my lower lumbar, Mm. I was I played the game fast you know what I mean I told myself which made me sit well with the way that things went is because I got hurt playing full speed you know what I mean and I got hurt playing the game that I play the way that I play do you think we're better with that now do you think teams are better do you think players are better with that now of mental health absolutely uh, I think it's I mean you know back when I was when I was in the NFL in 2010, coming in, uh, that was something that wasn't talked about. It didn't go hand in hand with an athlete. You know, you couldn't mention those type of things. You had to be tough, mentally tough all the time, and that's what you had to show. And those things weren't talked about. But now I see it's been talked about even more and more, which is pretty awesome. And I hope it, I hope it helps guys, you know, deal with injuries, knowing that, you know, it has to be split in between with your mental health and the physical aspect of it, you know? I hate that it happened against the Bears, but to see that touchdown when you were in the chat yeah. bars, um, yeah. that, that was pretty – what was that moment like after all those injuries you're talking about? It was awesome, man. You know, it's crazy because I get back and I score that touchdown in, you know, Illinois, the place where I came to, you know, make my home and is my home. And, you know, to be at this prestige university and everything – it was pretty awesome to come back after all the adversity that I went through 
and did that here in Chicago. It was it was an awesome moment I never forget. So what's it like for you? Um, you know, I always think about this with college athletes too. I don't yeah. think talk about it enough. Is when football's done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, what was that process like for you? Was it relief? Was it nervousness? Except, like, how, how were you feeling when it was done? done? It was a it was a bit of uh, mixed emotions. You know what I mean? Uh, a part of me was, you know, like you said, like, you know, exhausted from the from the standpoint of like just having to always grind, having to come back, having to always battle it out and everything. Not being in the position that I was before because every time you get hurt, that's a huge setback. And in the league, that's like a year's worth of setback. You know what I mean? And I have to put everything back on film and get back and everything. But um, it was uh, it's it's I think that's something that you know it helps the guy you know evolve as a person as well. But all of the things that I went through has helped me in my life now is to really be in the moment and really understand where I'm at, you know I me mean, as a person. And it's definitely helped me evolve, you know, took in everything that I've learned, you know, from a football aspect, which I tell guys all the time, if you're playing a professional sport, whether it's college pros or anything, the type of things that you go through to, you know, uh, study hall, uh, dieting, all those little things that, you do to make yourself that much better are the same uh, ways of things that you can do in your life to incorporate to make your life that much better in, in the real world outside of the sport and everything. But overall, it was a lot of mixed emotions, you knowing, trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. You know, I mean, what was my purpose outside of football? Yeah, and uh, I can see the logo on your shirt, Local House Coffee. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah Social House. Social House, sorry. Yeah. Social House, yeah, yeah, yeah. Social House. Couldn't read it off of that, but social loss coffee. That's uh, your focus now. I mean, yeah. what have you gotten into? I know you and your wife are uh -huh. in business together. What's what's the deal that you guys are doing? Well, you know, I um, I'm big in the community, man. I'm big on serving leadership, you know, and um, I, that was a way for me to, you know, give back and to serve a community. And it's quite awesome because these are the same people I'm serving coffee to are like Jaguar season ticket holders would come out and support us. So this is it's fun to be in a community and to to do something like coffee that brings people together. And uh, you know, just 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 really enjoying that, meeting different people, you know, as far as being an athlete and a professional athlete, you're kind of secluded and isolated in a way. But this was definitely good for me to like be face to face with people, meeting people, people not seeing me in my helmet and people putting the face to the name and everything. So Overall, it's, it's really fun, man. It's just different ways that I could, you know, implement certain things and, you know, creating jobs and, you know, just helping people. And that's that's just what I'm here for, man. Uh, just serving leadership for people for me. So I, I'm guessing you you own a coffee business. Are you big into yes. uh, when did you get into coffee? Like, when did you become like a, a uh, and again, not? <laughs> and I uh Every day, well, you know, I got, I got addicted to coffee back when, well, my wife did. She's Dominican and she uh, introduced me to coffee and gave me a whole spill and, you know, learned it a bit. And I took the step further to self-educate myself. But I used to always drink coffee before a game. I used to do a double shot of espresso. Really? Before every game. Yeah. Where'd you, <laughs> every game. where'd you get it? Uh, well, I was drinking Starbucks. This is when I didn't have the coffee shop. So yeah. I would drink like the little small double shot cans of uh, espresso. And um, I do that before every game, but um, you know, owning a business, man, and 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 uh, you know, doing that and just evolving from there is just is it's, it's quite you know fun to see. Yeah. Uh, so I, I do want to ask you, um, college football has changed a lot, really, yes. since you. Yeah. I, I think of a guy like you and NIL and what that could have meant. Obviously, D Brown was on campus right before you got here, and yeah, you know, a guy like that. What do you think like NIL could have meant for a guy like you when you were here with the team that you were a part of? I'm actually <laughs> glad that it didn't happen. You know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm glad that it, we didn't have the NIL and all that type of stuff because I don't know, man. You know, when money's involved, you know what I'm saying? A lot of things can go haywire, you know? So I, I just thank God that I was able to play the game and play it back then, back when – you know, this is what it was, college football, the BCS stuff and everything. I'm just happy. But the NIL, I think, you know, guys are going to be able to benefit from it now. 
you know, dealing with the likeness and all that stuff. And I think a big part of it has to deal with all the social media influences and all, all that type of stuff. Because back then, we just, I think Twitter just came out when I was still playing. And nobody, everybody was still trying to figure out how to use it and everything. So, you know, and I'm I'm quite of a, you know, introvert. So I wasn't, I'm not big into social media and all that type of stuff and likeness. I was the guy that just loved to play football and go home and play video games or something. Who, who would have benefited the most? I can think of a guy off the top of my head that I talk to a lot, but I don't want to. Uh, who do you think on your team would have would have been nuts with that? I think Juice would have. Yeah. <laughs> I think Juice would have taken advantage of it. I think Vontae would have taken advantage of it. Uh, I think a lot of guys would have taken advantage of it. You know what I mean? But I, I, one thing that I would be concerned about is how that would take advantage of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not not dealing with that type of stuff, really not knowing how is that supposed to go. And it's new. It's, fam- it's unfamiliar. Yeah. I, I'm also happy that social media, like we didn't have a bunch of like Facebook yet. Yeah. Like our parents weren't on it. <laughs> so it's, that's a, that's a, that's a tough thing. I can't imagine, it's tough. you know, it's tough, a man. kid with all that stuff right now. And, it, and I'm pretty sure it brings even more pressure on the player now. You know what I mean? Having to always showcase yourself, having to always be up to par and stuff you know at the end of the day we're still kids as well you know but young professionals oh so you're back in central illinois now regis uh before we let you go like what do you think it's going to be like walking in that stadium walking into a new football facility as well i'm, I'm sure you're excited to see that like what what, what do you think your emotions are going to be mixed emotions everywhere and i'm gonna embrace them you know what i mean and um i'm gonna enjoy the moment and i i, I just look forward to you know being there being back around everything and um you know, seeing if that we could pull off this win against Merlin and, uh, you know, just being thankful that I was able to, you know, you know, uh, represent the Orange and Blue. I'm sure it's a reflective kind of weekend for you. Like, what what do you think the University of Illinois meant to you? Uh, the, the University of Illinois meant a lot to me. It meant uh, that transition point uh, helped me evolve as a person, as a, as a man for life after you know, that short period of trying to be a professional. You know what I mean? It, it has definitely meant a lot. Uh, I have a lot of history here and I have a lot of emotions here as well. You know what I mean? And um, it, it, it means a lot to me to even be here talking to you, Jeremy, and um, just seeing familiar faces and uh, just being thankful that I was able to take on this journey. Well, just is there anything else you want to add, man? I, I can't thank you for your time, man. Ah, thank you. Um, we got to do this again and um, I just, you know, go align the eye, man. And, um, you know, this is, like I said, a very special place. I'm glad to be here and um, I appreciate this. Regis, thanks, man. Thank you.